Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, I know an awful lot of the local rumours and the local legends about the axe murder. So terrible, so brutal. But I've now read the book, uh, The Denham Massacres by Neil Watson. Yeah, a retired police officer in his own right. But long before he wrote his book, there I was, walking the very same beat that PC Taverner used to walk the first officer on the scene of the brutal axe murders. So, 22nd of May, 1870. Before we go any further, I should tell you the names of the victims. So all of the same family, seven of them, the Marshall family. And the first is the head of the household, Emmanuel. He was blacksmith and they had a blacksmith uh, workshop attached to their house. His wife, Charlotte, and then you have Mary, who was eight, Thursa, who was six, and Gertrude, who was four. Then the grandmother, Mary, and then Mary Ann Marshall, who was actually the sister of Emmanuel, who was there because she was getting married. Now, what happens is this. John Jones. He is a petty criminal. He is itinerant. He moves from place to place. Uh, he'd been in Reading Jail, and he was recounting how he was owed money by somebody and how he was going to get revenge. There was even talk of killing. So... What appears to happen is this. He turns up very early in the morning. Uh, Emmanuel is already at work in the blacksmith shop and he cannot have heard Mr. Jones coming in. Evidence points to the fact that he was beaten over the head with a poker, but it appears to have been broken. There must have been a fight, but his head was smashed in, we think, with a sledgehammer or the back of an axe. John Jones must have been splattered in blood. This is actually awful stuff. He now got nothing to lose. Regardless, if he gets caught, he's gonna be hanged. Does it matter, one murder, two murders? So he goes into the house and he meets um, Charlotte coming the other way. She's got a dress half over her night clothes and he simply fells her with an axe. These wounds were so severe that during the post-mortem, you could part the skulls. So he kills the wife, closely followed by the sister. Then he can hear in the back room something. He breaks through the door, there's the grandmother. Now the local legend has it this way, that the grandmother is trying to hide the children up the fireplace, up the big chimney in the scullery there. She is felled and she's found with the body of the youngest Gertrude in her arms. And then the other two, so the local legend goes, were pulled down from the chimney and then axed to death. Each one of them so severe that in the post-mortems, their skulls basically fell apart. Now I've, I've been to the scenes of murders and uh, yeah, the first on the scene, it's a shock, it's a horror. So can you imagine the next day when the bodies are discovered? It's Mary Sparks. She is the sister of Charlotte, right? The wife of Emmanuel. She's come to the house, can't get any reply. And there is a passing uh, labourer uh, from Denham and she calls him over. He says, you know, could you have a look? Could you get a ladder up? This guy puts the ladder and all you can see in the bedrooms is all the clothing all over the place. So straight away, that's a, a little bit suspicious. He comes down. He looks into the back window and he sees what's happened. He goes down to the front, they break the door in. It must have been horrendous. The police are called PC Trevenor. He's the local village Bobby. He'd been on duty all night. He must have been exhausted. And what does he find? He finds, first of all, Emmanuel in the workshop. But there's a strange thing. It looks like he's been dragged along the floor his boots are missing. His feet, his stocking feet are clean. Somebody's had his boots away. He then looks poker, all broken. Then as he goes through the house, he finds sledgehammer, axes, all covered in blood. Can you imagine this police officer's horror when he sees the children side by side and the grandmother? But straight away now, they put out a call for the superintendent to come from Slough. Now this is 1870. They don't phone. There's a message has got to be sent. It's a rider. 
right? And the superintendent, Dunham, he comes by pony and trap, so the legend goes. And when he arrives at the scene, investigation, clothes are missing, a pistol's missing, a knife is missing, a watch is missing. It would appear that whoever done this has taken the clothes that belong to the blacksmith, Emmanuel Marshall, and he's dumped his old clothes there. We now have a description of his old clothes. Now in modern policing, can you remember? well, they didn't have that when I was a policeman. It was mainly by phone or radios that didn't work, but hey. So now the superintendent, he's got to look for clues. He's got to find out. And then as the news begins to actually break, Charlie Coombs turns a bit of evidence. There is a clue down in Uxbridge, in one of the DOS houses, the cheap sleeping places. He talks about this uh, Jones fellow. He's got an alias and he talks about how the night before he had these scruffy, worn out clothes. All of a sudden, he's got this suit of clothes and he's wearing boots that appear to be too tight for him, apparently. And he's got money and he's got a watch and he's giving people a loan and he's flashing money around having a drink. This is the break in the case. Superintendent, straight down to Uxbridge on his pony and trap, I love this. He finds Coombs, Coombs tells him, yeah, he was on about going over to Reading on the train. To Reading, takes Coombs with him because Coombs is the only person who can identify him. This is wow, we're talking hours and they're already on the trail of him. Into Reading, local police station. Oh yeah, we saw somebody of that description walking over the bridge. They lead him to one of the notorious DOS houses, pubs, and sure enough, they identify him straight away. They don't hang around because this guy's got a pistol and he's got a knife and they jump on him. I love this. They jump on him, handcuff him. They've got him. I didn't kill no one. I didn't kill no men, women and children. It was somebody else done it. Well, that's interesting because the news of the Denham murders hadn't escaped. It hadn't been broadcast. Nobody in Reading actually knew it had happened. So now they bring John Jones back to the station in Slough. At the same time, at the Swan Public House in Denham, the inquest has already opened. These things moved really fast. Now, I'm not going to go into everything because it's a long story. Read the book, it gives you everything you need to know about what happened, but it's the investigation. He never admitted to doing the killings, even though the evidence stacks up. He had the property, he wore the clothes, his original clothes were covered in blood. And then he was actually seen near Cheapside. So there was a trial at Aylesbury uh, and he was found guilty sentenced to death. Jones was hanged. Not all of um, Emmanuel and Charlotte's children died. One of them was staying with relatives. That was Francis. He escaped. On the day of the funeral, the vicar actually commented that it was just the week before the bands had been read for Mary Ann to be married. And instead of the bride coming through the doors, it was her corpse. And now the bells toll so sadly for her. This is such a tragedy. Well, I hope you found that video interesting, if not a little grim. Now, if you did, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget, turn on the notifications so you're gonna find out what's uh, coming next. And now a shout out for a couple of my Patreon members. There is uh, Mr. Tibbs and JD. So thanks everybody. Bye for now.